Hi everybody, let me, you know what, I'm gonna do this. Boop, all right. Today, I'm with my little captain here. Um, I'm not gonna just give out his name because I don't know stuff, but I decided uh, if I'm gonna be making videos the way I want to, excluding him isn't gonna do me any favors. So I have to dress the way I feel comfortable, the way I want him to present himself as well. And anybody who knows me in real life knew this. all this was only a matter of time. But that's not what we're talking about today. We'll get to that another time. Today we're going to talk about something that's near and dear to me. Something that is one of the few things that's been my anti-jail, believe it or not. Something that's kept me on the straight and narrow and becoming a better person. Okay, that's giving it a little too much credit, but it definitely didn't make me a worse person that's the best i got <laughs> and look you're on you're on tv buddy <laughs> he's just chilling for now he just woke up from a nap we kind of both did but that's why i want to like wake up and just make the bed there's a book about it check it out um but today we're going to talk about pokemon that's right yeah yeah he knows that word he knows pokemon all too well uh, he actually has a couple of stuffed Eevees, Pikachus, that I, well, they're mine, but he plays with. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. But I want to talk about how I got into Pokemon, the role that Pokemon's played in my life, and he's going to be as much a part of this as he can be. Um, so wave. Hi. <laughs> you sleepy guy. It's all right. Um... Well, we're going to start by where it all begins. I I was, I don't even think I was out of the homes yet. That's, that's another video too, but I'm going to say some weird things that are only going to come into context later. But uh, I was only out of the homes for a little bit, but I still had like uh, after school uh, programs I had to do. And I had very little time to like, have anything i was basically still in the in the homes i was just allowed to it was like was it outpatient therapy is essentially what it was but anyway um uh i was about 13 maybe 14 when i went over to my friend uh Memphis's house that's not his real name but uh i'm protecting his identity yeah you know you know your uncle Memphis. anyway <laughs> um uh, I was actually friends with oh, with his uh, brother at the time, but I came over and they had gotten some uh, like uh, downloaded games and emulators for uh, Game Boy, and um, and one of the best things that they had found was this game that was in all Japanese, and it was called. A pocket monster and I believe we had the green version and uh, here, I'll even move so you can see what he's doing <laughs> we had the green version <laughs> and it was all Japanese every bit of it except for the numbers obviously but trial and error, we figured out what moves attacked. Luckily, we figured out, like, oh, maybe this thing that goes boom, doom, boom, doom with a little pitcher of fire is something fire. And, yeah, well, I, I had Charmander. Uh, like, we each ended up picking somebody different just because we wanted to, you know, check out everything. And for me, it started an absolute love affair. At this time in my life, I, I, was, I was going no place good. And I was going there super fast. Um, and, well, I was going someplace worse. I already just came from no place good. Now I'm just going someplace worse. But Pokemon gave me, for the first time, actually, um, despite being, like, a reader and, like, liking books and things. Oh, he's got my notebook back there. Uh, <laughs> I, I just... I never found that escapism from my life, which again, that's a whole other video later. Uh, but when I played Pokemon for the first time, that's right, when I played Pokemon, it 
it was the first time I, f- I felt less that of what was going on. Like, it was the first time I was able to become another character and do something else. It was essentially uh, one of my first introductions to RPGs. And, yeah, it, it blew me away. And I, I played as much as I could every time I went over there, but it was, you know, three kids, one computer, and, and we all wanted to do the same thing on different save, like, files and all that jazz, so, you know. And it wasn't mine, and it wasn't my computer. Like, that's the, that's the big part of that. But, um, yeah. And that going over to my friend Memphis's house is how I got into like gaming in general if I'm being honest because before that it was I uh, would have decided to call um it was strictly entrepreneurial endeavors before that and yeah but uh and as pokemon grew I obviously I would sit down I would write down all the names and the oh my god oh right on it I was like I was going to be the poker rapper like I didn't give a sh- I was I was going to mix pokemon with DMX cuz that's that is a very accurate depiction of um the uh dichotomy within me on the outside it was DMX on the inside it was pokemon you know I was trying for that but um but yeah, I just, I couldn't, like, live the truth at the time. Like, I, and even as it became more popular, I just hit the little notes I made. I never uh, brought them to the special schools I was in or the after school stuff. Like, when other people liked it, I, I just kept my mouth shut and my head down and, like, waited for other people to inevitably, you know, make fun of them. And then I just fucking kept on my hustle and did my thing. Because what I did for myself, uh... I guess opinion of me to a certain extent mattered as far as like coolness but (laughs) yeah things are um but as it grew as Pokemon got bigger and bigger and grew into this juggernaut I I never changed that like I, I still, like, would secretly, like, trade in back halls and, like, of school with kids. I'd be like, if you ever tell anybody about this, I'll fucking smush your face. And, like, and how I even got the Pokemon games in general. I don't, I uh, don't let this fool you. This is, this is effort. Um, but I come from less than nothing. Like, I come from pretty, pretty horrible beginnings. And... When I love something, the only way I knew how to get it was through fighting. But you can't just, like, beat somebody up and take stuff. You'll get in trouble. So, like, essentially, Pokemon battles became a real thing for me. I would put up my Pokemon game. You would put up your Pokemon game. And, like, I would often put up my uh, Game Boy because I wanted the newer game. And they would need, like, some other thing and blah, blah, blah. And they'd be like, yeah. And let me tell you, Shonen Spirit is real. All right? Because not only have I fought and won... For, uh, may I say, Pokemon Crystal. I bloodied my knuckles for that game. I also got the sh kicked out of me for it by somebody who must have wanted it a bit more than me, like three, four weeks later, like maybe a month and a half, max. <laughs> and I lost the game and the Game Boy. Like, we put it up. Like, that was that was how it was done back, back then. And... That's how I lost and got most of my games and handheld systems. Like, some people say they they love things, but buying memorabilia, like, doesn't necessarily make you a bigger fan. Like, I've put blood and, like, love into Pokemon. Like, I have felt the weight of blood on my hand for something I love as much as Pokemon. And people probably will never understand that. But that's something, like, that you'll never, like, you can never forget. Like, that's a love. And I would have done anything, like, anything to play those games. And I did. <laughs> and every time, no matter no matter how bad the whoop and the feeling of playing that game, like, it was, it, it made it better. Like, it was the first time I was able to dissociate 
from the life I was living and the things I was doing and be a better person, even if it was just in a video game, fighting monsters with other monsters and stuff. I didn't even get the dogfighting aspect of it like until somebody else said that, and I was like, how dare you? How dare you bastardize such a beautiful thing? What you got there? Oh, all right. That's cool. That's Mama's DVD that she never even opened that Papa got her. That's cool. <laughs> but, um, yeah, the end. Uh, after I started, you know, making, making my money and doing my thing and my entrepreneurial endeavors increased to the point where I, you know, could sustain myself, I... I would, you know, I stopped fighting for them, you know, like a flippin' savage, and I started to buy them, like, you know, a consumer, and support the product. I never got into the side dailies. The side dailies were never my thing, like, uh, I never played the pinball games, I tried the mystery dungeon, but I never actually owned them. Like, those were always, like, borrowed or, like, shifted between friends or something, and I never really got the, the, like, into the meat of the games. Just the beginning, like, roguelike bit. And I understand it, but I didn't get into the story, which is what Pokemon's really all about. For me, at least. Um, let's see. Just, life is life is a real blur for me. So, like, I can't remember specific things. But I can remember the first time, the first time I saw a Larvitar. And I was like, that's, that's my second favorite. The first Pokemon I ever saw was actually... Um, uh, a Charmander, and that is to this day my favorite Pokemon. Like, I've, I've, I have some pretty, I have a Charmander, um, you know, I'm not gonna say that, but I have some pretty cool Charmander items that I've gotten from friends. <laughs> Alright, I wanna talk about competitive Pokemon a little bit, because I really, really feel like it's kind of destroyed the soul of Pokemon. It's really turned into turned it into mo even more of a numbers game. Yeah, stats and things mattered before, but it, compared to like the love and effort and things like that, like they completely banned the whole, oh, if your Pokemon loves you, then it does these certain aspects that they introduced in the newer games. And I absolutely love those aspects. It it's, makes it more like the show when your Pokemon loves you and decides, hey, I'm going to be extra careful about dodging or like I'm, I'm going to fight this one out and really, you know, I'm not going to I'm not going to go down from this blow that would normally take me down. And I love it. That really like I love it. It's just one of those things. You know what I mean? And the competitive scene just takes not only all of that away, but you just pick whatever Pokemon you want. You give them whatever moves you want. Oh, I want this uh, hidden power because it works against this Pokemon. So what it becomes like I get the idea that it's Competitive, but you it's it's stripped down. You've taken the soul completely out of it Like that's like saying oh, it's a sports car But really it's a motorcycle. No, okay a sports car is a sports car and a motorcycle is a motorcycle and they're both fun But there's a reason they're not the same thing all right, it's just, it is what it is. And that's my analogy. The sports car being, you know, the Pokemon because it's a more built thing with story and, you know, plot lines and so on and so forth. While, you know, and all that fun mixed in while the motorcycle is just fun. This isn't anything anti-motorcycle. I love me some bikes. But anyway, I just, I don't like the way it's become so just numbers ones and zeros ones and zeros that's it this attack for this pokemon that attack for this pokemon we're all going to use the same thing because these are the best ones and blah 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 and i don't like it now i'm old and i'm set in my ways and that's all fine and well but that's really all that's to it maybe i'm just old and set in my ways and that's fine because i'm still going to buy the new games when it comes out i'm still going to blind nuzlocke them when they come out because i love pokemon and I'll defend Pokemon now because it is not only because it's this massive juggernaut, but because I remember sitting in like first period and just like secretly writing down all the names I couldn't absolutely remember from the poker rap. I I remember this clean as day. I was in uh, Owego Apalachian Bosis. It's a school that they had to shut down because 
They had like magnetic locks and things like that. Like it was basically a half prison, half school. Anyway, um, I was I was there and I was in first period and I can't remember any of the other names, but I was writing them down trying to remember and I thought it was Ry Dung, R Y D U N G, and I thought it was gonna have something to do like a dung beetle, you know, and it just the not knowing and the speculation and oh, I, I miss it so much. You know what I mean? That's why whenever the new game's around, part of me is like, oh my god, I want to I wanna know everything. But at the same time, I don't want to know it all at once. The age of the internet has like kind of pooped on the explorative nature of Pokemon to an extent. Because any bit of frustration and a lot of people, not all of them, but a lot of people go straight to the internet to find the answer. Like, oh my god, I can't do this one thing. I'm not even going to look around. I'm just going to go right to my phone and look up game facts or some other person who's already done it and that's that's you man do you don't 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 do anything but you ever <laughs> unless you're like a horrible person then you should change but other than that like play your games your way i prefer to take a methodical approach and do it my way and it's usually vastly over leveled but usually under equipped because while I'm busy fighting, I don't explore as much as I think I do. See, I'm noticing that. But, and Pokemon was the reason I started to, like, I could hyper-focus on grinding and getting this move or seeing what move came next. That was a big reason I played. Absolutely huge reason I played for the first majority of it. Especially when it was in Japanese. Oh, man. Like, we would just play for hours and hours. Like, I would go over there after doing all the stuff I had to, and we'd, like, 7 to 10, just grinding Pokemon in Japanese to see what this squiggly line would do after they learned. Like, it was, it was a real pure experience, and it was probably, like, the first pure experience I had in my life at the time, as far as gaming goes, and something I can get lost in. So, I, what do you do? Oh, alright, you're fine. So yeah, Pokemon has been this absolute juggernaut in my life, and I just think competitive is one of the worst parts of it. You know what I mean? I, I don't really know what else to say. Um, yeah, competitive is... It's like just stripping away all the, you know, all the good parts and keeping just the fighting. You know what I mean? It's the... And then people get mad when uh, Pokken tanked. I couldn't stand Pokken. Like, yeah? Are you serious right now? He didn't, see, he didn't mind Pokken. He didn't mind one bit. Because there was a lot of colors, he could push the buttons and a lot of things would happen. That's right, I let my son play video games with me a little bit. So what? The first game he ever played was Pokemon. And that's okay with me. That's very okay. Thanks, man. I don't need these just yet. This is my gaming headphones. Or do you want to put them on? Yeah, there we go. Here, show everybody. Look. <gasps> there you go. This is my little man. All right. This seems like a good enough spot to stop as any. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, what you think. Uh, maybe tell me about your first Pokemon moments. You know, tell me how you got into it, things you've done in Pokemon. I know my stories are a little different than most but yeah <laughs> let's all right we, we gotta say goodbye we gotta say goodbye all right wave bye bye can you no you don't want to all right well he doesn't want to do it he's not used to it yet this is our first one but, oh he's more interested in the pen he can't have but yeah this is captain valen being 100 percent i hope to see you guys later have a good one